How many of us here, you really need to be wrapped in his arms right now? You really need to be feeling God reach down and hold on to you this morning. You know, I'm going to ask her to sing that again, but I've, I've got a favor. I like all that will. I've got a friend, and he's been a really good mentor to me. He's been, you know, I do my job as good as I can a lot because of him. Um, he's 55 years old. He's fighting COVID, and he's in the ICU, uh, partly because he's got asthma. But he's battling, and he's battling real hard. Um, when they took the, the, the cross off of and sent, sent him out, you know, God told me to put one in my pocket. And as I do this message this morning, to do it for him. Because he needs God's touch, not just in his body. But he needs God this morning. God's the only one that can reach down in that hospital room and heal him. But I know that there's more here this morning that's fighting. I know there's more here that's, that's, that's needing his touch this morning. Not a man's touch. I, I, I had this own friend of God in my head this morning. You know, because so many times we battle about being friends with this person or that person. And we forget about being the friend that God wants us to be to him. Because he's our friend this morning. But there's so many people that need a touch from that man this morning. And, and, and as she goes through this song again, I ask, you know, if you need him this morning, if you need his touch, if you need him to just wrap you in his arms, you know, these altars are still open. It doesn't matter if it's beginning of the service or end or middle. You know, these altars are open this morning. Pastor, if you would.
Father, that you would touch in his heart, Lord. Lord. few weeks I've really felt his arms wrapping around me it seems like he he puts me in a situation and then he reaches down and just grabs me and holds me and says I know you're here but so am I and I'm right here with you going through it the whole way Um, if you've got your Bible this morning turn to Matthew 5 and 14 I know I spoke a little bit at the food and fellowship about the lighthouses, but I'll try not to get back into it too much this morning. But if you have it, say amen. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Let's pray. Father, as we come again to you this morning, Lord, Lord, I just thank you. Lord, I thank you for those arms that reach down and hold. Lord, I thank you for that presence that comes down and just fills us, Lord, that we know, know that you are here, Father. And, Father, I ask that through the rest of this time, Lord, Lord, that you've given me this morning, Father, that you would just touch, that you would anoint, Father, that you would just move on this congregation, Father, that you would help us to receive, help us to know that you are here with us this morning, Father. Father, I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. You know... As I grow older, I tend to, I'm getting, I've always been very protective. I've always been very cautious, um, probably since I hit 30. You know, all that wild stuff went away. But, you know, I I see it more. I had to threaten pastor a couple times this weekend to get away from me because I'm too old to be fighting and playing and getting pulled into water and, you know, We've got some good stories on that. We'll talk about that later. But, you know, as I floated down that river Saturday, I kept telling myself I'm not going, or uh, Friday, I kept telling myself I'm not going. It's pouring down rain. I'm not getting in that water. It's cold. And uh, one of them told me, said, come on, Grandpa. I said, well, I am a Grandpa. But, you know, you knew what they were getting at. I knew what they were getting at. And... So I went, and uh, I about froze to death. I tried my best not to show it. I tried my best to sit in that boat, but I sit in that boat going like this, shivering. And all the rest of them's diving in the water and splashing and carrying on. But, you know, there's things that happen. There's things that bother me. And, and with that trip that we went to um, at the beach, you know, we drove 1,300 miles. It was 400 down there, 400 back, and we done 500 while we were down there. Uh, we were on the road. But when we started that trip, the first, I'd say, 250 miles, it was smooth. Everything went great. Then all of a sudden on Highway 64, it felt like my camper went in the other lane and then came back and then went in the other lane and came back. I drew up in the front seat of that truck, and I wasn't the same from that moment on. I was very comfortable until that happened. Once that happened, I was nervous. I was watching everything that I'd done. You know, but the thing is, is, aren't we a lot like that in our Christian life? When one little bump comes in, yeah. everything goes haywire, everything goes crazy, yeah. and we forget you know, the last 250 miles that was going smooth, yeah. the last 250 miles that 
you know, we knew God had his hand on us, and we think this one little bump's going to keep us from the next 150, you know, or less, more or less. We, we think that little bump in our life is going to cause us problems between now and heaven. We can't do what God called us to do. We can't be what God called us to be because of that little bump. You know, but God can take care of that bump. God can take care of wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, whatever situation it is. He can fix it. He's there. He's wrapping us up. He's holding on to us. And he'll help us to get through it. The, the, the scripture that I really wanted to get into was Mark chapter 5. Now, I'm not going to read the whole, the whole chapter, but 5 and 1 says, So they arrived at the other side of the lake, at the region of Gerasenes. Now, if you can remember this part of the story, this is where he runs into Legion, the man that's, that's demon-possessed by multiple demons. And God speaks, or Jesus speaks to those demons, and those demons flee. You know, here this man is. He's not clothed. You know, he, he's naked running around the island and won't nobody have nothing to do with him until God steps in. God steps in and fixes everything that's going on in his life. You know, I look at my past, at my life that I was living before I, I, I found, or so I say found, I found God. God found me. And I wasn't possessed by multiple demons. I might have had a few little problems what, in my eyes, you know, but God still reached down and spoke to me and healed me, you know, just like he did everybody in here. And, but I look at this man, nobody will have anything to do with him. Everybody thinks that he's crazy because he's, he's, he needs God. You know, how many people in your lives now you know that they need God? They need a touch from the Father. You know, and are we being that lighthouse, for lack of a better word, to them, to where they see God in us, to know that they can come and ask us what we've got? You know, Pastor talked about it the other day. I, I thought so many times about the lifeline. I mean, the lifeline has been in my head. You know, I even put on the front of my kayak a, a throw cushion, and I tied a rope to it. Because, to be honest, I wanted to throw that lifeline to somebody and say, I'm doing what Pastor told me to do. And I thought about that and thought about that and thought about that because I want to be you know, in that position in my life to where God can use me. God can, 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 can make me broadcast out to other people. But as he went on, you know, after he spoke those demons out of him and... and, and you know, the, the story with the, the pigs and all that. You know, the next time you see him, he's clothed. He's in his right mind. And he's sitting there talking to Jesus. You know, how many times have you been through something that's so horrible, so bad, you take it to God, and the next thing you're doing is you're sitting there with a clear mind talking to God. You know, it seems like that little talk with him, that little conversation with God can fix everything. Um, but, you know, it says in, in 5 and 17, it says, And the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. And as Jesus was getting in the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, No, go home to your family. Tell them everything that the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. You know, I look at so many places now. They don't want God as a part. Now, I saw a, a, a picture of a lady holding up a sign that said California has no room for God. And if you look at all the things that's happening in that state, you know, between the earthquakes, the fires, the, the morality of the people, you know, how much God do they have? How much God do they want? You know, is that lady's sign representing a whole lot bigger group of the population than just her? Because there's a lot of people out there that don't want him. They don't want anything to do with him. Um, and a lot of times we take the, the brunt of what happens because they don't want nothing to do with us. You know, I've said before, I want everybody to like me. 
I try to be nice to everyone. So when somebody is upset at me, it hurts. It kills me. And, you know, if, if you've been around pastor, you know he's the same way. You know, if he thinks somebody's mad at him, he thinks somebody's upset with him, it drives him crazy on the inside. Because you just don't, we just don't want nobody to be upset with us, hurt with us. It's just, how can you lead somebody to God if they're mad at you? But, side note, sorry. Um, but, you know, these people kept pushing God away. And, and I'm sorry, but the thing that the United States needs right now is more of God. We don't need less. We need him to step in and take care of all these things. You know, it kills me that they, they are screaming that all these wildfires in California is because of global warming. But they've arrested six guys for arson for setting them. You know, the devil's running rampant. And are we doing our part to show people? Are we wrapping our arms around them? Are we, you know, showing God's love to them to where they want what we've got. You know, we're not always going to be accepted. We're not always going to be the, the one that everybody likes. And as tough as that is. You know, on our trip, I helped a man back his camper in. I mean, this poor fella was struggling. And um, he made two laps around the campground. About five attempts to back in. And finally, I walked over and guided him into his spot. And when he got out, he said, you want some bourbon? I'm like, no, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I don't need any of that. And, uh, you know, he, he started to walk off. And as he walked off, I thought, I got out of that one. He stops and turns around and says, I got some Michelob Ultra, too, if you'd rather have that. I'm like, no, sir, I, I don't drink alcohol. And uh, he goes, oh, one of them. And left and never spoke to me again the whole trip. You know, we were there for four days. This man sat right beside of us and never spoke again. You know, because I'm one of them. Well, thank God I'm one of them. You know, I'll take being one of them if it's for him. But I'm going to shine that light because he saw that I, I had the ability to turn him down. I had the ability to say no. You know, as Christians, there's a lot of things going on in this world that we've got to find the ability to say no. We've got to push away. We've got to, you know, allow our light to be different. You know, Guys, at y'all's age, imagine the people that y'all can encounter because y'all are different at school. Because somebody sees something in y'all, especially as crazy as it is right now, that somebody sees something in y'all and how y'all treat or how y'all act, that they want to be like y'all. You know, show God in everything that you're doing. But as Jesus crossed, he got in the boat and crossed back to the other side. And... 5 and 22 says, Then a leader of the local synagogue, synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. And Jesus went with him. As Jesus is on this journey, you know, he just left an island, came across the sea. As soon as he gets across, he's hit with, you know, hey, my daughter's dying. Can you come and help her? You know, what does Jesus do? He just goes. You know, that's how he is in our life. Nothing else gets in his way. He stops whatever for us. And if you go on with this story, you know, just three verses later, it says, A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding and had suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. You know, and you know, it goes on that she presses through that crowd. She knew that she needed something from God. She knew where she was going to get her touch. She knew where she was going to get her healing. And she pressed through. She pushed through that crowd and got what she needed. You know, so many times today that we, we are holding back. We're not pressing. You know, I, I hate to put him on the spot, but I walked through um, down the hallway Last night, I think it was last night, and um, no, I'm sorry, it was Friday night. Last night I stayed at home, um, but I kept hearing something, and um, I was like, you know, what's going on? 
And I got closer to the door, got closer to the door, which it was my room, so it was okay for me to get closer to the door, right? And it was Brother Nolan. He was in there pressing in, seeking after God. You know, here he is by himself on a men's trip. And he's pressing in, seeking after God. And I, I sat there going, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, because that's what our young people need. They need a man that's going to press in, seek after God, and do what he's called to do. You know, I, I'm sure that God left at 3 o'clock in the morning when I was snoring, and he wanted to kill me. But, you know, that's what we've got to do, y'all. We have got to get on our knees and press in and seek after him with everything that we've got. It's more than just coming in here on Sunday morning and Wednesday night and saying, okay, I'm a Christian, I praise you, God. It's every day. You know, every day we've got to want him. Every day we've got to seek him. And it don't matter. Vacation, God's still there. You know, so many people, when they go on vacation, they leave their Bibles at home. You know, I think one of the greatest things that I love to do is sit out by a campfire and read my Bible. Because it's just it's something about it. It's something that's it's surreal. It's, 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 you know, I feel God. But yet, you know, knowing that we as a people, especially now, especially with everything that's going around us, we've got to press in. You know, but we can't just stop. You know, we're going to hit the crowd. We're going to hit the, the resistance. But that resistance can't stop us as a people of God. We've got to continue to push. We've got to continue to press in until we get to him, until we get to where he wants us to be. You know, we can't just keep coming in, sitting on a pew, saying a hallelujah and leaving, and that's the end. You know, there's got to be more to this life than what we're doing because some of us are faltering. Some of us are failing. Some of us are letting him down daily because we're not pressing in after him daily. We're not wanting him so much more daily. And, you know, this lady, she fought in. She got what she wanted from God. You know, all she had to do was touch him. But I think the press to get to him was a lot to do with her receiving her miracle. You know, and, and that's what he wants out of us. He wants us to go after him. And, but... Right after, right after this point, you know, they get to Jairus and tell him that his daughter's died. You know, here he is walking with Jesus to his house. This lady steps in, stops him, you know, and, and us being people, we're probably thinking if he hadn't stopped and dealt with her, he'd have been at my daughter and, and my daughter would be alive right now because God would have got there. God would have got there. You know, y'all that, if God is guiding our steps, it's not going to be smooth all the time. It's not going to be perfect going down this road. You know, there's times that we're going to hit bumps. There's times that it's going to feel like the camper's going from one side to the other. But the whole key in all this is to trust that God is in control. To trust that God is pushing us down that path. You know, the, the, one of the scriptures that I had originally looked up, it says... Your word is, my, is a lamp and a guide to my feet and a light for my path. You know, if God is guiding your path, if Jesus is, is pointing you in the right direction, why do we worry about the bumps? Why do we worry about what comes in the way? You know, and, and Mark 5 and 36 says, But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just have faith. Ain't that what it boils down to? You know, I... I I've said a friend of mine's definition of faith is you know, knowing that or trusting God to do the right thing. If we trust that God's doing the right thing in our life and we just follow him, hold on to him, where can we go wrong? You know, as J. Iris went on at the end of the chapter, you know, he tells him, the little girl's not dead, she's just asleep. And he just speaks to her. He says, Talitha Klum, which means little girl, get up. You know, all he did was say, get up, arise. You know, how many of us feel down? How many of us feel like we're hurting? And this morning, you know, there was some that, that 
allowed God to wrap their arms around or wrap his arms around them. But how many of us feel like, you know, we need God to say, little girl or little boy, son, daughter, you know, however you want to look at it, get up. You know, get out of what you're dwelling in. Get out of what's holding you back. Get out of what's holding you down. Get up and live. Do what I've called you to do. Be what I called you to be. You know, we need him this morning. We need his touch this morning so much stronger than we've ever needed him before. You know, and as we go on this journey, as we go on this, this path, you know, if, if, if God's truly that light that we're following, then what are we worried about? What are we so upset about? Why does it get us so bent out of shape? And I, I made the comment with, uh, we were going over to Shatley Springs yesterday morning, and Pastor was driving, and as usual, you know, I'm getting very close to God, and I was using Brother John against him, because I said, get him, John. Get him, John, he's going too, much. He's going too fast. But, you know, I told him, I said, the worry or this upsetness is going to be the death of me because I allow things like that, not his driving, you know, but I allow things like that to get to me. And I, and I think of people that I know that have in their 50s had stress heart attacks because they allow so much to build upon them that it kills them. You know, I don't want to end up like that. I don't want to be like that, you know. It, it hurts me so bad, you know, because a good friend is struggling, you know, to breathe in the hospital, and I can't do anything for him, but God can. You know, I don't know that God will ever take away the times. Sometimes I think he puts me in the, in the truck with pastor just to draw me closer to him, but he's not going to take those situations away. But how we handle those situations is what he can change. How we handle, you know, the stress. How we handle, you know, the feeling alone, the depression, you know, the things that come along with this world that the devil tries to use to attack us with is what he can change. You know, and he can even reach down in a vehicle and hold on to you and let you know that you're safe. That you're wrapped in his arms. As the music's coming back, I've uh, Friday morning, you know, when I left, I left the house at, I think, 6 o'clock, a little bit before 6 o'clock. And it was pouring rain. I mean, it, it was raining so hard, I couldn't half see the front of the truck. And... Along with that, it was dark, you know, and there, here I am, you know, I'm typical me, you know, it's like, I, I, I can't take this drive, and I, I think when I got to um, Wilkesboro, or Taylorsville 1, I passed a little restaurant, and I said, I think I'll just pull in here and get me a biscuit, and um, I'll wait till it gets daylight and drive on up and meet everybody at the house, and uh, something inside me says, no. You know, you've got a destination. You've got somewhere that you've got to be. And I pushed on, even though I was, I was bothered. Because, see, not 15 minutes into my drive, you know, I hit a water hole. And I say a water hole. I, I think it was a lake on Startown Road. And that big red Chevrolet was sideways going down Startown Road. And, uh, yeah, I hear you, brother. But, um, but, you know, I was nervous. And, and I allowed that to affect my mindset of what was going on. You know, as you're standing this morning, how many of us this morning have, have, have allowed our circumstances, have allowed, you know, some little sideways twist in our road to change our outcome or our destination of what we think we should be going or where God wants us to go. You know, the great thing about this, I've already told Pastor about it. You know, as I drove on and as the, the sunshine came up, the rain eased off. God put it in my heart. 
He said, as my sun rises in your life, the storms go down. The things that you're facing will go away. You know, the rain never totally went away. The rain never totally quit. I made it up to the Shatley Springs exactly when the GPS said I should make it. So it never slowed me down. It never changed my path of what I was going to. But that sun, as he rose, you know, that changed everything. You know, this morning, if you need the sun to rise in your life, he's here. If you need the sun to, to come in and change your road, he's here. All you've got to do is press through and allow him to come and make that change in your life. Allow him to do a work in you that no man, no person can do. You know, there is that secret place. We've got to get to that secret place with God and, and allow him to make the changes in us so that we don't miss our destination, that we don't miss where we're supposed to be. So as I pray, these altars are open. If there's anybody that would like to come, you know, come to him this morning. Father, we just praise you this morning. Lord, Lord, I ask that you would just touch in this place. Father, the things that you've showed me this week, the things that you've showed me in the last few weeks, Father. Father, that if I bring you higher in my life, if I bring you so much stronger in my life, the things, the problems that's going on around me, they shrink. They get so much smaller, Father, because you're in control. Lord, you're the one that's going to touch. You're the one that's going to, Lord, lift these things up. And Father, I pray that you would just press that on your people this morning, Father. Father, whether they're in this congregation here sitting, listening, or, or, or watching on the, the TV, Father, I pray that you would just touch them this morning. Father, that you would let them know that you're there, that you're there to press, that if they press through to you, Father, that they could get their miracle, they could get what they need from you, Father. Father, this world has no hold on us, Father, but you, you're in control, Lord. Lord, I praise you, Father. Just remember that no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, you know, it's just a bump in the road and God's still in control. You know, once we hit that bump, just know that God's there to straighten things out. God's there to fix everything that we go through if we just allow Him. If we don't hold back and we press through that crowd to get Him and the things that He has for us.